everything lost is meant to be found. Let's go. Drive for Wet sequence in the film is where we have an underwater sequence where um, Angelina and Lara is going down to the Lunar Temple, which is beneath the sea. Uh, to get down there, her and her two friends go on these weird underwater bikes. And obviously, logistically, taking Angelina and the actors underwater was, was always going to prove a bit of a problem. So um, Steve Begg, the visual effects supervisor, came up with this, you know, trying to do it dry for wet, where you recreate the look as if it is underwater, but actually you're not, you're on a stage. The sequence opens with um, a real wet for wet start, but unfortunately we found out that the bikes were a bit ungainly, so uh, we were lucky out of like 30 takes to get one good take where one or other of the bikes didn't suddenly man careen out of control. Um, so I think we actually saved them uh, a hell of a lot of aggro by going with the dry for wet uh, approach. I know the stunt boys had some, some games trying to make those work. The first time I really had time to play with those in the water was in Greece, so two weeks before we were shooting. I had a feeling uh, using this, uh, which is basically an old fashioned technique where you smoke up a, a stage and uh, you, know, you light it appropriately so it looks like an underwater environment, that I thought using that the older techniques and uh, allying it with uh, CGI, we could um, create a convincing underwater environment. So very early on, in fact, before we had a director appointed, uh, I shot a test to convince uh, everyone that it could be done. We managed to get a, a small rocky set and uh, some real uh, wet bikes, cut the propellers off them, suspended them on wires and basically flew them through this smoky environment. And uh, yeah, the producers bought it and uh, it became a major sequence in the opening of the film. You have two switches, uh, one is for your fan blades on the right side and the left side is for the lights. So many layers in that, in that shot, it's like massive. But they all add up to this incredible new environment, which I think looks incredibly real. Okay, reset, lights off, fans off. When you shoot really on the water, it never looks like really on the water. And I always had problems with that. I never, you never can put fish in. You never, fish, the mom was just on the water with a camera. Fish are gone, forget about the fish. Um, the water gets very, very blurry and you barely can see the actors. Chris Corbell and his guys basically created uh, three overhead tracks on one of the stages at Pinewood using computer c controlled winches. They then flew these bikes across the stage with the uh, actors on board. Uh, and then with, uh, as I say, a smoky, uh, a foggy type of, uh, environment, we basically shot them as if they were uh, actually underwater. I thought it was like being, it was like being in a ride and it feels like you've got your own amusement park and, but at the same time, I think it was um, painful, mainly for the boys. The footage is then cut. It's then, it was then given to uh, the effects house. And their primary job was to, first of all, remove the wires convincingly, which was a, a task in itself. Uh, and then apply to the image uh, using track technology um, all sorts of uh, um, elements that you see in an underwater environment, such as seaweed, particulate matter, and, and fish. And the real deal was uh, getting the mix just right, you know, so it didn't look too contrived. And I think that the whole in the water sequence, you know, as it is put together now, it looks more in the water than you can possibly imagine because you see all the things that you imagine to see there. You could never ever do that in, in, in a real tank. After the sequence in the Lunar Temple, she has to uh, escape from the collapsing structure. She then encounters a shark that had stopped her early in the sequence. And being Lara Croft, she cratty punches it in the nose, stuns it, and then hitches a ride on, on its, using its dorsal fin to the surface. Because she was free floating, this couldn't be done using the dry for wet techniques. It had to be shot in a, a, a contained uh, blue screen underwater environment. And we were lucky to have a 60 by 40 uh, tank constructed for us. She was actually pulled through the water using, uh, once again, one of Chris Corbold's uh, wire rigs. And we had a, a rough uh, dorsal fin shape, which towed her and a stunt double through water, which we then uh, replaced with a CG shark. Hmm. I was thinking about something a little faster. The other uh, major visual effects sequence is where she basically uses a stealth 
re-entry pod. Of course, you wouldn't be Lara Croft. You wouldn't get there in any normal way. He has to get there fast. And he made up this incredible trip that he dropped a pod from out of space. This we realized uh, primarily with uh, CG effects. Environments were actually quite interesting that uh, the Chinese environments she crashes in as they were actually shot in whales. Pod crashes into a cliff and then does this classic sort of Donald Campbell, blue bow, crash and, and, uh, and wipe out. Interesting shot because almost the entire shot is digital. We have digital map painting surrounds digital water. The only elements that are really actually are live action are, are these splash elements here. We fired these big chunks of metal into the water. It's the most fun I've had in a day for ages. And you can, we left one last bit in there because it seems to match up with the animation so well. So the last time you see the pod before it finally vanishes is actually a live action lump of car that we fired into, into the paddock zone. The Shadow Guardians are these supernatural monster characters ah! Ah! that inhabit the, this primeval uh, petrified forest that surrounds the last tomb. And they're basically the, the, one of the final barriers you have to go through. It's a continuation of a se sequence that we shot in Africa in a place called Hell's Gate. And you come through a gorge and turn a corner and then you're onto the stage. They hold the petrified forest, which is not a huge sequence, and we needed to hold bond stage for that. It's one of the biggest stages in the world. We're now in what they call the Petrified Forest, and um, that's on the what they call the James Bond stage. And that seems huge, and it's just all these trees, uh, and it has been completely petrified, and it, it, it's a huge space. To create like a forest that looks real, and that is at the same time feels like it's petrified, all those trees had to be man-made, handmade by an artist to really make it look like like real trees, like real petrified plastic. And it really looks like you come into a very strange, surreal world where the shadow guardians might live and, and, and where everything is always moving. There's nothing, you know, it, nothing is what it seems it is. It's an amazing place, specifically built to support the stunt, to support the, the special effect, to give the, the shooting company a method in which to pull off uh, an incredible sequence with a lot of technologies involved. So you have to really know exactly how what you're going to do with the visual effects in mind. You know that whole idea of the moving lights. You know, it's like that was a big job. It's like how I always can create shadows all the time, non-stop in that set. A lot of them are real shadows that we uh, we created by having this enormous stretch of lights that, that through every scene, every shot kept moving. You know, throughout uh, throughout the set. But then they had that would have to match the visual effects later because those shadows. That's ultimately where the shadow gardens come out of. These trees back here are all digitally map painted, and so we had to dish, adding additional shadows in there to keep the movement flowing through the whole painting. And so we had to make it in a way that it would feel very natural that those creatures would come out of it, and that the shadow actually, so that when the creatures come out and they would move back in the tree, it just, the shadow just continues, it's just another part. They, they, they start for shadows, and there's this point where they, they, have, to, they have to go from being a, a flat, moving shadow on the surface to being sort of leaping out. These characters are realized entirely using CG. Um, we had basically nothing on the set to represent them for various reasons, but all the interaction and what have you with the various soldiers uh, coordinated by Simon Crane using various wire rigs and what have you, yanking the stuntmen around the set. Later on in post, we uh, animated the characters in sync with, or in sympathy with uh, the various background actions. But I think ultimately the sequence is quite dynamic. It's got a variety of elements to it, like sometimes the shadow warriors, are shadow warriors or guardians, as they're now called, uh, are just shadows, so you don't notice them. And they're just very subtle, creeping through shots. And sometimes they're just nothing, there's a little bit of dust might fall off. So all we have to do is add a, a live action element to a live action play. And the days weren't so CG labor intensive. And other shots, you've got a full, big, 100% physical monster, full screen, dripping dust and cold breath and stabbing uh, actors. It's relatively dark, but when you see a glimpse of it, it's like really scary like hell. And it has, a, it has like massive power. It's like it lifts you up and throws you against the wall like your paper. 
<laughs> Holy shit! I think that the production designer and the whole visual effects crew and we did a fantastic job in, in, in achieving this and making it look so real. We go from the dry for wet sequence, which is underwater, to the lunar temple destruction, which is a, you know, a huge interior, to a wet for wet shark ride in a tank environment, where she's recovered by a submarine, which is a CG environment, to fringe of space, where she drops down using this re-entry vehicle into China, And, and then into Africa with the various map paintings and petrified forests and, and uh, various creatures that she encounters there. Quite a broad spectrum of uh, unusual sets and environments that we had to add our visual effects to.